Hello friends. This is my friend's uh, A1200 and he wants to do a very rare mod. Most people don't do this mod. Um, uh, most people feel that a floating point unit is not uh, really that important. My friend does a lot of productivity software um, and he says something about can't, you can't load JPEGs in AdPro or something like that, Art Department Professional, or maybe it was another program, I don't know. But anyway, it requires, some of the things he wants to do requires um, a floating point unit. So um, he bought the, uh, the socket, uh, surface mount style socket to go in here. Um, this is the spot where uh, it's, there's an empty spot for a floating point unit and you can decide to um, to just solder the floating point unit directly on there, the chip directly on there, or you can put a, a socket, which everybody always prefers that. So, especially if, you know, I mean, it's a good thing you bought two because you never know. You Sometimes you get a bad one or whatever. So, I will be able to swap those out easily if we have a problem. So, um, anyway. Uh, there was one other video that I found uh, that, that did this. Um, they didn't show any very many close-up views of the procedure. I'll try to do um, a little more so in case somebody needs some extra info. And um, so the first thing that we're going to do is remove this center section which is in the way. It's got these little tines all the way around that holds this centerpiece in. And we just have to make sure we, uh, we clip those uh, flush. All right, let's have a real closer look at this. Yeah, now that I got one side off, it's easy to pop it out. So in hindsight, you want to just take a hobby knife and pop, go right up against the pins this way and pop down and pop all those guys and then you can just push through now that you have one side off and it'll safely come out. I guess you could, I mean that's if you wanted to be real safe about it. You could probably just push it out without too much problems, without bothering to use a knife. But anyway, now there was an index on that on that center section which I have now popped out. Basically told me where pin one was. On the board, pin one is on the bottom of the socket. Well, you only have one beveled part. And it doesn't indicate which part is beveled there. So, wow. I'm off to a great start. It's a good thing I have another. So the beveled part here is the bottom here, because here's here's the pin one marker. It's a little arrow. See that? There's a little arrow there, right there on the bottom. And then the beveled edge. The beveled corner is here. So, beveled corner, just like that. If you don't have a spare socket, you could also use the chip as a judge. The chip goes actually upside down. It's got a pin one marker right there. And so that's going to be oriented like that. There's the pin one symbol there. And you can see that this, is a, this has a bevel on it. And that'll match up with the bevel right there. Another way to do it.
So that's all cleaned up. Now the only thing I need to do is do a visual inspection to make sure I don't have any bridged solder areas and also um, at the same time making sure that I, I should be able to see the connection. The pins, they do kind of hover above the motherboard. So uh, the good thing about, the bad thing about that is, is that it took a little more solder to get them to connect. Uh, the bad, the good part is, is that I can actually see a blob, somewhat of a blob under the pin um, and how it, you know, and, and I'll be able to easily identify um, if we have one that's open. So let me just take a quick look at this. My feeling it's, it's without being an actual mechanical pick and place machine, it's hard for you to get things straight. Yeah, see that, that side looks perfect there. Okay, let's put it, let's hook it up and make sure that it works, which will prove there aren't any bridge solder connections. And then we'll put the FPU in and see if we can uh, test it and make sure it works. Okay, so we have a stable system. And now we are going to put our floating point unit in. Just a quick power up, make sure we're still stable. Hmm. That's not good. All right, so we got a yellow screen. Uh. <laughs> uh, typical. So we're just going to uh, use Amiga PCB Explorer to test all our pins on the socket and make sure we have a good connection. Moments later. I decided to do another visual inspection and I saw what looked like a pin that didn't have enough solder on it. So I added some solder, put the FPU in, and well, at least we know a yellow screen is one of the, I guess, data lines or address lines off on the FPU. At least in this case it was. Alright, so uh, I have a floppy with sysinfo and I have a floppy with workbench so so it turns out I didn't have to do any continuity testing or hunting through PCB Explorer okay we have workbench RAM seems to be there Hopefully I included icons and pain in the ass. There we go. Okay, FPU 68882. There it is. We're good to go. Um can I find a benchmark that will work on the FPU? I, um, I don't know. Yeah, so uh, uh, other than using Vista Pro or something like that, um, there really isn't a good way to stress test the FPU. Um, so I'm going to leave it up to Brad. He's the one who wants to use it. I, I'm sure it's going to work. I mean, uh, the computer sees it. Um, and he has a spare. I guess we can test the spare too. I'll make sure he knows that the spare is working too. Uh, but otherwise, um, that's it. So that's how to put an FPU in an Amiga 1200. All right. Thanks for watching, friends.